Welcome to our videos on reactions of alcohols. In previous alcohol videos, we saw how alcohols could be prepared and we saw various methods of doing so. But this time around, let's look at the reactions that alcohols undergo. And of these, the first we are going to consider is oxidation of alcohols. Here I have a sequence. It says primary alcohols, when oxidized, will move in two steps. That is, first they could be oxidized to alkanal and then to alkanoic acid. For secondary alcohols, they usually become alkanones. Then for tertiary alcohols, they are not oxidized under ordinary conditions. Now the oxidizing agents we use for this purpose include Potassium heptoxodichromate 6, that's K2Cl2O7, and KMNO4. And the KMNO4 is usually alkaline. So alkaline KMNO4 could be used. Then in some instances, we use aqueous, which is neutral, KMNO4. But for acidic KMNO4, it's rarely used. Acidic KMNO4 is a um, very vigorous and oxidizing agent. And as such, the outcome may not be as desired. Now, if we were to oxidize the primary alcohol, primary, would we need an alkanal or an alkanoic acid? If we need an alkanoic acid, in that case, we want the oxidation to be exhaustive, to be complete. Then we could think of using this. So this is one way of taking primary all the way to alkanoic acid. But if we want our primary to become an alkanal, then this may be our better option. Because with K2Cl2O7, the oxidation is slower. And it means that you can stop the reaction at this stage. Just before the alkanal becomes oxidized to acid, you could have it removed. You could stop the reaction. So K2Cl207 is preferred for partial oxidation. But we may also use this for partial oxidation, just that by then we may need something like um, 2 methyl 2 propanol. 2 methyl 2 propanol, which is also called tertiary butyl alcohol. So tertiary butyl alcohol, which is 2 methyl 2 propanol, may be required as um, an added reagent in that reaction so that primary alcohols in that case may be oxidized just to alkanal and not beyond. So summary, primary, you want it all the way there, use this. You want it halfway, use that and stop the reaction halfway or use a mixture of these two and you still get alkanal. Now for secondary um, alkanals, it will be nice to oxidize them to alkanones using this same reaction. So K2Cl2O7 as an oxidizing agent is appropriate for converting primary to alkanal or secondary to alkanone. So this is your choice of reagent for this second reaction. But for tertiary alcohols, we said if you were to oxidize them using these reagents, K2Cl2O7 or alkaline KMNO4, the reaction would simply not take place. Tertiary alcohols are not oxidized under those conditions. However, if we use an acidic KMNO4, acidic, so KMNO4 in acid, for a tertiary alcohol, then what usually takes place is dehydration. The alcohol becomes dehydrated to give an alkene, and then that alkene undergoes oxidation. So, tertiary alcohols, yes, are not oxidized under ordinary conditions, but under vigorous conditions, they could be oxidized. Then for the secondary alcohol, you remember we said this is your best oxidizing agent. And when you use this oxidizing agent, you have a smooth reaction. But when you use KMNO4, especially acidic KMNO4, then there could be rupture of carbon to carbon bonds. Your secondary alcohol could break down. It could break down into fragments. So the best bets are the ones I have discussed for each of those oxidation reactions. Now moving on from oxidation of alcohols, the next reaction of alcohols we are going to be talking about is 
Number two now, acidic reactions. Acidic reactions. When we say acidic reactions, we're talking about reactions where the alcohol behaves as an acid. Now, typically, when alcohols react, this is an alcohol, R-O-H, it is possible that cleavage occurs at this level to give us RO minus and H plus. In this case, we say that the alcohol is behaving as an acid because this OR is called alkoxy. But more importantly, according to the Bronson and Lowry theory of acids and bases, you have this acids are proton donors. So in this case, the alcohol is behaving as an acid. Now, in other cases, we have the alcohol undergoing cleavage like this so that we have R plus and OH minus. In this case, we get an alkyl group. So this is alkyl and then what you have there is hydroxy. So in this second case, the alcohol is not behaving as an acid but as a base. So in this first case, where the alcohol behaves as an acid, now let's see some reactions that actually follow that pattern. Some reactions where the alcohol actually behaves as an acid. So the first one we'll be looking at is reaction with sodium metal. Reaction with sodium metal. That's the first of the acidic reactions. Now, when alcohols react with sodium metal, what happens? Typically, what happens is as follows. You have ROH plus Na to give RONA plus H2. So, if I were to answer that question of what happens when an alcohol reacts with sodium metal, the answer would be hydrogen gas is liberated. So, sodium has the ability to displace hydrogen from um, an alcohol. Now, apart from sodium, some other reactive metals like potassium, aluminium can also do the same. They can also displace hydrogen from alcohols. So it's not just about sodium, but sodium is more popular in this regard. Then again, the other product here is called an alkoxide. An alkoxide. Alkoxides can have various applications in chemistry. Now let's try to let's try to give this reaction some more color. Let's use ethanol. So ethanol is C285OH. If I were to react it with sodium Na, I'll get um, C285ONA plus H2. Okay, so this is a balanced equation. And if you look at this balanced equation, we have an alkoxide here. That alkoxide is called sodium ethoxide. This is sodium ethoxide. Now, sodium ethoxide may be reacted with Rx, an alkyl halide. Let's define this alkyl halide. Let's say we use C2H5Cl, for example. If C2H5Cl, an alkyl halide, is to react with sodium ethoxide we get products like this c2h5o c2h5 so this is c2h5 then oc 2 h 5 plus the other product there is nacl so the product we have obtained by reacting our alkoxide with an alkyl halide is an ether this kind of product is called an ether or an alkoxy alkane this method of making ethers from alkoxides and alkyl halides is called the Williamson's synthesis of ethers. So there are various ways of making ethers, but this is one of them. It is the method of Williamson, the Williamson synthesis of ethers, and it involves the ether being made from an ethyl chloride or an alkyl halide generally and an alkoxide. So when alkoxides react with alkyl halides, we get ethers. What else can our alkoxide be used for? Our alkoxide could be reacted with carbon disulfide, CX2. In that case, assuming we use C2H5ONA, which is sodium ethoxide, we get a compound like this. We get a compound like C2H5O. Of course, because of before the Na now, we have S, C, double bond S, and then Na. Compounds of this sort are called xanthates. 
So this is a xanthate. That xanthate has been manufactured or has been prepared by reacting the alkoxide with carbon disulfide. Now, summary of this whole reaction. First, alcohols behave as acids when they react with sodium metal. And the eventual outcome is when sodium metal reacts with an alcohol, hydrogen gas is liberated, which is the reason this is one of the ways of testing for alcohols, even though it's not the ultimate way, because there are several other compounds that can behave like this. So alcohols can be tested by reaction with sodium, which gives an alkoxide and then more importantly, hydrogen gas. Now for the alkoxide itself, we said it could have different fates. There are different things we could do with an alkoxide. One of them is to react the alkoxide with an alkyl halide, in which case we get an ether, and we call that the Williamson synthesis of ethers. Then in this second case, we can react our alkoxide with carbon disulfide so that we obtain what we call a xanthate. So that's the reaction between alcohols and sodium metal. I'll show you one other reaction where alcohols behave as acids. This time, it is their reaction with alkanoic acids and their derivatives. So reaction with alkanoic acids and derivatives of alkanoic acids. Now, when ethers react with alkanoic acids, what do we get? Or when alcohols, please, react with alkanoic acids, we usually write the reaction as alkanol plus alkanoic acid to give ester plus water. Now the esters are also called the alkanoids. Now this reaction so much resembles the usual reaction we call them esterification. Now esterification is known to, sorry, neutralization please, neutralization. Esterification resembles neutralization. Neutralization as we know it is the reaction between an acid and an alkali to form salt and water. Here we have an acid and an alkanol to form ester and water. Now, what are the differences between esterification and neutralization? First, in esterification, you get ester and water, whereas in neutralization, you get salt and water. Difference number two, esterification is reversible, whereas neutralization is irreversible. And then number three, while neutralization does not require a catalyst, esterification requires a catalyst of mineral acid. And the mineral acid is usually conk H2SO4 or dry HCl. So any of those could be used as catalysts for um, esterification. Now, this esterification, like we have defined it to be on the board right now, involves an alkanol R. Let me write it as OH plus alkanoic acid R, COOH to give. There's something I'm trying to establish here. So you just watch and see what it is. Um, RCOOH plus H2O. Now, if you see the way I've written my oxygen in the alkanol, you see that that same oxygen is appearing here. And what that tells you, sorry, this becomes RCOOR, beautiful. What I'm trying to show you here is the oxygen in the alkanol is the same oxygen you are seeing in this ester. And it means therefore that this alcohol does not donate OH- for the acid to donate H+, and then form water. Instead, your alcohol donates H+, while the acid donates OH-, and these two come together to form the water there. That's why if you look at the oxygen in the water, I've written it the same way as I've written this oxygen, whereas the oxygen of the alcohol is present in the ester. So this is one of the acidic reactions of alcohols because the alcohol is behaving as an acid by giving out OH only, sorry, H plus only, all right? So this is an acidic reaction. Now, 
It is not every reaction that converts alkanol to ester that we call esterification. We only call it esterification when the alkanol is converted to an ester by a reaction with alkanoic acid. If the ester is formed by the alkanol reacting with an alkanoic acid derivative, then we don't call the process esterification. Instead, it could have other names. For example, an alcohol is said to undergo acetylation when it reacts with carboxylic acid and hydrides. So in that case, it has reacted with a derivative of the alkanoic acids and what it has formed is an ester, but the process is not called esterification. So in that case, we could have something like this. R prime OH, that's an alkanol now, plus RCOCl. This is the first of the carboxylic acid derivatives. It's called an acid chloride. If an acid chloride were to react with an alkanol, again, H leaves the alkanol to combine with Cl here so that I have RCOOR plus HCl. In this case, the alkanol has been converted into an ester by a reaction with an acid chloride, which is a carboxylic acid derivative. You see that the reaction is irreversible, even though it is still acid catalyzed. Then again, the alcohol ROH may react this time with RCO bracket 2O. That compound is called an acid anhydride. If an alcohol were to react with an acid anhydride, H is given up from the alcohol, then RCO, one out of these two, will be used here. So that we have RCO from here, combining with OR from there. So what do we have left here? Another RCO plus an extra oxygen. Then with the H here, I have RCOOH as my other product. Then finally, we have ROH. This is an alkanol again. This time, plus RCOOR. That's interesting. An alcohol is reacting with an ester. Esters are carboxylic acid derivatives. Now, they could react with alcohols, just like the other derivatives have done, to form a new ester and the new alcohol. So in that case, I'm going to get, watch now, R, C, O, O, R. So what has happened here is, O, R, this O, R has been replaced by that O, R. And it means that that O, R can come here now so that our second product becomes R double prime O, H. So we say in this case, an alcohol reacts with an ester of another alcohol to form a new ester and a new alcohol. This reaction is referred to as a transesterification reaction. Transesterification. So transesterification involves an ester of one alcohol becoming an ester of another alcohol. So that's what we are seeing here, transesterification. Now the carboxylic acid derivatives are four. Acid chlorides, acid anhydrides, esters, and amides. Amides are written as RCOLH2. So if they were to react with an alcohol, ROH, we have RCONH2. In this case, we get an ester as RCOOR, and then the other product is NH3. So this is H+, and that is H+. Now, summary of this. Here we have another reaction where the alcohol is behaving as an acid in that it donates H+, plus, not OH. In this case, the alcohol is being converted into ester. For an alcohol to be converted into ester, it's either it reacts with an alkanoic acid or with an alkanoic acid derivative. In the case where it reacts with the alkanoic acid, the reaction is reversible, it is acid catalyzed, and it is called esterification. But when it reacts with a carboxylic acid derivative, the reaction is irreversible, it is still acid catalyzed, and it is not called 
esterification. So esterification is only used when we have alkanols becoming esters by reaction with alkanoic acids. So that's about this reaction. And that will be all for this video. By the next video, I'll show you other reactions that alkanoic acids undergo, beginning with their reaction with halides of phosphorus.